Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the stream. I'm Martin Wenzel, and we are in Microsoft Flight Simulator today. Good morning from... Well, I'm in the United States, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. But we're going to be flying today from Santa Cruz de la Sierra, Bolivia, to Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, this is our World Tour Flight 170. Uh, today we're in the Boeing 737-700 from PMDG. We're using FS HUD ATC. Maybe we'll be using FS HUD ATC, I don't know. Same with GSX Pro, that's not working. So those two we might not be using. Right now I'm currently got the AIG traffic controller on, like old school the way we were doing before. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. I got these new from Latin VFR. They're not really new from Latin VFR, but I don't know how, but new for us. Uh, these jetway replacements. So this is really cool. Um, I, I was having issues with missing parts of the jetway, and I've noticed that since I've downloaded this and added this in, I'm not missing any parts of the jetway, and it's really cool. Um, you can actually, it's got nice sound effects. And let me just see if I can rotate a little faster. There we go. Well, we got some other planes, and they already are connected. Let's zip over here, take a look. So here we got this other Boliviana connected. Uh, this guy's not at a gate, so he's not connected. Now I think, I think the carts, um, some of these carts, these vehicles are actually getting pulled from GSX Pro. The problem is GSX Pro, the scripting engine isn't working, so I can't use it. But I think the the ground uh, equipment will still reflect it. So that's kind of kind of cool. A little bit of movement on here. All right, so you can see we're in Bolivian or Boliviana de Aviación. Uh, we're gonna be doing flight seven hundred and let me just get it up here seven hundred thirty six flight three seven six Boliviana de Aviación in the PMDG Boeing seven thirty seven seven hundred from Vero Vero International Airport in Santa Cruz de la Sierra Bolivia to Sao Paulo. Garujos, Governor Andre Franco Montoro International Airport in Garujos, Brazil, serving Sao Paulo. So that's where we're headed today. It's gonna be probably three hours when it's all said and done. Hopefully we can get the flight set up quickly. So let's get into the plane. So I'm gonna... Unfortunately GSX Pro isn't working or the engine so we're not gonna be able to see any passengers coming on and all that fun stuff. But we're just gonna get things going. So I'm gonna use um... Uh... What is it? Uh, not pushback. Yeah, pushback helper. It's called pushback helper. I've been using this on and off for for the last couple of years. It works very well um, when all other programs tend to kind of not work. This one's just light. It works. I hit jetway. And here comes the jetway coming out. There you go, we even got some uh, electrical cords connected in there. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Nice sound effects, nice looking uh, jetway. And so far I haven't had any missing jetway since I've installed this, so. Uh, I think I got it for $6, so not, a, not too expensive at all either. Alright, so let's get into this pretty plane and get it ready to go. All right, first things first, let me get my uh, checklist up so I can kind of know what I'm doing. All right, uh, duh, 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 duh. Well, I should probably open the door, but weirdly enough, we have to have the battery on so I can do any of that stuff. I think I could do it with uh, Pushback Pro, or not Pushback Pro, uh, the, the Pushback Helper, I could open it too. Uh, but we'll go in here, FS Actions, doors, let's open that front entry door so we can actually get in and out of the plane. Uh, all right, now we're on board, and we got the uh, battery on and covered back up top. I have to remember what I'm doing. Oops, too far up. We want to make sure it's on battery and standby power for now. I'm going to turn up the panel brightness. Master caution disengaged. Back in here, hydraulic pumps are all off. 
fuel pumps all off. All right, let's get our ground power. So down to the FMS. Ground services, ground power. Let's get a cart. There's the ground power cart. It is connected. It's not the fancy one that they have in the GSX Pro, but it does its job. It's even connected on in there. All right, so we got ground power back up to here. We'll turn it on and we'll switch to ground power. Continuing on our list, we want to make sure our position light is steady. Logo light can come on. We'll turn on the wing lights as well and the wheel lights. Uh, master caution again, disengaged. Uh, seat belts, auto and on. Uh, I'm going to leave it on, off right now because we are going to be fueling. So we're going to get in to this menu and let's do all this. We're going to do everything through the through the PMDG menu today since GSX Pro isn't working. So payload, want to set to empty. And fuel, the same thing. We'll set to about a third. Actually, we'll go... What do I need for this flight? So I don't have to fuel, fuel too much. 8,400, okay. So let's set it to 5,000. So we got 5,000 on already. Be a quick fuel. Uh, return ground services all right so we need for fuel 8,493 today so we're gonna round that up to 80 I'm gonna do 8,750 and we're gonna press the fuel truck passengers today we'll get this set up in here it's gonna be 130 passengers For some reason it goes, let me see, I think there's actually a way. I saw this before, I don't know where it is now. I think it's in setup. Aircraft, uh, equipment. I saw it on the 800. I don't know where it is on 700 and I don't know exactly where it is. I think options, simulation. Let's see. Because there's actually a way where you can. Ah, okay, so it's not going to let me. The sworn it was in here somewhere. There's somewhere where you can set the. <clears throat> there's two different options, and maybe maybe it's only for the, the 800. That might be what it is. That was in setup, right? Yeah. All right. So I think in the 800, you have the option of actually two different um, uh, passenger setups, and so you can get more passengers on. We can only get, it looks like, uh, 128, so we're going to be full. We can start boarding. I'm going to just, well, maybe we'll start boarding pretty soon. I want to get the fuel over first. Fuel truck's actually already here. Wow. Fast. So let's get that fuel coming on. All right, fuel truck is going at the same time. I'm going to go over here, make sure we get our cargo. Oh, GSX is working. Awesome. There it is. So GSX is now on. We got two fuel trucks. <laughs> Oh no. Alright, let's see what happens here. Let's see. I wasn't expecting it, but maybe it reset. So there's a new tug. So the tug changed. Alright, so it will use the, the Boeing fuel system. For some reason, the <laughs> the cargo is right back here. So 
All right. Well, let's get back in here. Let's get some stuff set up that we need to get set up, and we'll play with all that other stuff later. Uh, we can always just set the payload as needed. Uh, but we'll try to get it to kind of immerse. Uh, recirculating fan is set to auto. Pack left and right. Auto. Uh, autopilot's checked off. Speed brake checked down. That's going to be down here. Yep, yep. Da, 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 da. We should go up top to the IRS. We're going to go and do our test. For some reason, these lights are not lighting up on the 700 lately, but I think they have on the 800, which is the plane I'm more familiar with in any case. All right, back into the FMS quickly. And we're going to go... actually into the FMC. What did they say? See, GSX likes to talk, but then sometimes I miss what it said. Boarding passengers now. So let's see if we can see them. I'm not seeing any yet. We do have a glass jetway. I don't know if the jetway actually... Alright. Unfortunately, they're floating. So they're kind of... <laughs> oh, there we go. So there's a pilot. Actually, we'll go out here. Awesome. Here we go. Finally. And they're not floating through the air. They're actually going where they need to go. That's pretty cool, isn't it? All right, so I'm going to go back in the plane and get the passengers boarding. Um, but let's do this uh, initial position first. Uh, we're at a uh, silver. That's what I call this airport. Uh, gate six. And we'll copy that down. Execute. Go into route. Oops. That's right, it saves it. And we're taking this to Sierra Bravo Golf Romeo. Sorry, Mika. I, I, I didn't say hello. I, I wanted to say hello and then I got distracted. So, hey, hey, Mika. Glad you're here. Uh, we got a few other people here. Uh, say hi. I mean, I, I, I like to know who's here. Uh, thanks for stopping in this morning. Uh, we're flight number... What are we? I wish, I wish I could see this stuff. There it is. 736. We'll get that in. And then we're going to jump back out. Or we're going to make sure we get the... Go over here, get the passengers boarding according to this. We'll get them boarding. Oh, we missed it. We missed the crew boarding. Oh well. Okay, so here's the, the luggage is already here. The fuel truck is... So the fuel truck left, even though technically the Boeing or the PMDG fuel truck is still here. So we're gonna get in there and fix that quickly. Uh, ground services. Don't need the fuel truck anymore, right? Yeah. Release the fuel truck. We'll just set the we'll set the cargo because I don't it, the cargo doesn't work through the same system. But it's, I think it's a much. I think he's gonna. Oh, we gotta open the doors manually for him. Uh, it's back over here. I'm missing the passengers coming on. Come on, doors. Uh, right here. Cargo. Cargo. And let's get the passengers. So, you can already see them. There they are. Wow. There you go. So, when it works, it works. Hey, x last Kiwi. When it works, it works. It looks really cool. Um, some of them, you'll see some floating every once in a while there. But, everyone's kind of clumped together. I got it set on insane. So, that means all the passengers. I don't know why it's kind of tripping a little bit there. But, it looks really cool. Not as many people carry-ons as I've seen before. That guy's got a carry-on. 
It's really cool when you're outside and they're walking along certain certain airports have you walk along paths. Um, there's different ways to edit that and stuff, so pretty cool. We'll go inside here and see them. <laughs> that guy's on his phone. That's pretty cool. I'm, Do you have the 737 or did you get the 737-800? Oh, which one? The 700 or the 800? Um, I wish I had held out for the 800, but I guess I'll have the 700 and 800 now. Oh well. Um, I should have waited because I'd rather just have the 800, to be honest. It's the more useful one. Alright, so passengers are coming on. And you can hear... You can see them even getting on right in here. They might be a little too tall, though. Yeah, you can see their heads are kind of... <laughs> cutting through and we have the okay he's missing a luggage cart I don't know what happened to his luggage cart that hasn't happened before so we'll go over here where you can see him putting the luggage on yeah four versions of the 800 to get the cargo version the business version yeah the price is it, it, PMDG, yeah, is overpriced, and especially for the 800, considering I haven't seen much difference between the 800 and the 700, and probably even the 600, in, in terms of what you're getting model-wise. I mean, the only difference is probably the flight thing, and so, yeah, there should be a discount. They should, they should honestly, you know, if you buy one plane in the series, like, maybe, maybe have the first plane you buy be, you know, whatever, a certain amount, and then every other plane... Yeah, I liked what uh, Aerosoft did with the CRJs. Like, if you want to get the 900 and the 1000 for the CRJ, if you already own the 550 and the 700 set, you get... It, you, you just have to pay another 15 bucks or something. And it's like, okay, that's totally reasonable because... You know, yeah, you're giving me some different models. There's a little bit of different flight thing because those planes are bigger. And the same with the 800. But for the most part, like, the only thing different with the 800 is that there's, I think, a few more knobs right here. <laughs> to be completely honest so so yeah I mean I'll give them money when they I, I'll probably give them money again when they come out with the, the triple seven or something I'm kind of kicking myself that I got the 700 and then the 800 I wish I just gotten the 800 and done that because you know I'd rather have the 800 than take the 800 the few times that a 700 pops up in real life and just use it in that case versus the other way but we we have both now, so we'll be uh, we'll be in the 700 a few times. This one we're in the 700, even though real life it is the 800 because I couldn't get a livery for the 800 for this uh, airline yet. Okay, so let me get back into doing. I should get my IRS aligned set the nav here. Okay, looks like we're already aligned, or we're going to be getting aligned. It looks like all the passengers are on board too. Oh, there's the alignment. Okay, I want to... I need to get the... I need to get my route put in. So let's uh, stop messing around. Alright, route today. You guys can see it up top. So our first spot is going to be Tomer. Tomer. Then we're going to be on Uniform Mike. 415. That's the airway. Then to Sidak. Sidak to Uniform Zulu 22. Then Golf Romeo Delta VOR. Uniform Zulu 42 again, or 42, now airway. And then Zerez. That's an S, Sierra. We'll take that to, uh, that'll be our, uh, our star. So we'll activate, execute. I like to just always hit execute, just so I remember. Uh, our initial performance. What I'm going to do is go over here, because we're not doing the cargo through, um... We are ready to go when you uh oh are. Yeah, why are my passengers not on board here? What's going on here? Why did only four passengers come on? <laughs> Start and then stop. Okay, that's weird. No big deal. Um, I think payload, I want to do the cargo. So cargo today, 
because I'm not using the PMDG cargo because I don't think that works together with the ground services, the GSX, but the fueling does. So I we, we did get fueled. Actually, we just had two fuel trucks, but oh well. Um, cargo, cargo, cargo is going to be 3.4. So I'm going to do 1,600 both sides. I think we go like that. Is that right? As you can see, our, our plane is split. We have eight first class seats and 120 economy. Uh, hello, everyone. Wow, we got a, quite a few viewers in here. Let me see, where is everyone on here? I'm looking at the wrong thing. My wrong screen. Oh, we got a few people on Twitch. Awesome. And we got a bunch of people over there on YouTube. Thanks for all stopping in. If you haven't already, hit the follow button on Twitch. Hit the subscribe button on uh, YouTube where you uh, Getting the PMDG 737-700 set up. I think I just need to wait for the passengers to get on for my uh, my zero fuel weight here. I can put in my reserves for fuel. That is uh, going to be about a thousand. So we'll put 1.0. Cost index today is five. And our cruise is going to be 370, 37,000 feet. Execute. Uh, transition altitude. It doesn't sound right. Let me check and see what that is. 5,000 feet here in uh, Bolivia. And one limit. Uh, I, I typically just put this at about 58 degrees. Um, that's going to change your thrust needed. Um, I do have a I do have a calculator for that that will give a, some options, but depending on how long the runway is, what you want to set for this. Did I ever play DCS? I I have I've downloaded it. I've had it. I played it maybe a, twice. I've just never really spent the time to really learn it, and uh, it's a whole different thing. But. Uh, I wish I wish I had more time. I think if I was still in China and I was, you know, able to game all the time, uh, as it is now, it's like I have enough time to do a few streams a week, early in the morning. So that's why we're, yep. So that's why we're I'm I'm streaming early because my wife and baby are still sleeping, and then hopefully I get done around noon with the streams. I'm planning that if we have some shorter flights, which this flight might be a little bit shorter, I'm not sure. And if we end about 9 o'clock or something, then I'll do another flight and it'll be a U.S. flight. And I've got, and I've got a bunch of shorter U.S. flights. So they'll probably be, you know, half an hour to an hour. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, next U.S. flight, and might do it today, is going to be Orlando to Miami. So it'll be a nice little short flight on Spirit Airways. All right, flaps. We're going to do 5 degrees. Uh, center of gravity, that's going to change as we continue to load. I think they're done loading, so I don't know why they aren't driving away. What's going on there? I'm going to close the doors on them. Did we have the other entry open back there? Yeah, why are these other doors open? <laughs> We actually close all these doors because we're ready, ready for pushback technically. Um. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, with your guys' support, that'd be great. At least be able to stream a little bit more. Take another day off from work. All right, we're gonna turn these panels up and back into the checklist. Make sure. Let's see. Da -da 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 -da. All right, so I didn't ask for clearance. For some reason, um, ATC, uh, FS HUD ATC is saying I have to be in a parking spot and not at a gate, which is annoying. I don't know why, and for some reason it doesn't recognize any of the gates at this airport. So we'll resume the flight later. We're going to assume they gave us clearance. We're just going to be cleared to 10,000 feet. We'll do that. Um, I'm going to arm the flight directors. 
You always want to do the one that you want controlling, and that's going to be on our side. I'll arm the uh, auto thrust as well. Okay. Now let's see, go back into... Ooh, wrong place. Departure. Here we go. Okay, that's what I want. We are taking off. Runway 16. We're going to take Tomer 1 for the standard instrument departure. Execute. And back in here, do our arrival. We'll put the arrival and get that all set up as well. They'll, come, they'll obviously change it later if they need to. So ILS Oscar 09 left. And we're coming in on Evra 1 Delta. Transition Loman. And I think this one is Zeres. Yep. Alright, so that is all set in there. I'm just waiting on the passengers, I think. Right up here. Turn on the seatbelt signs. Fuel pump on. I'll start the APU. Uh, ever thought about switching genres? Um, I'd like to play some other games, obviously, but I, like I said, it's just, I'm, I'm really in the flying right now, and then it's just, it's the only thing I have time to do and have set up, but I, I do want to eventually stream some other stuff. I need to kind of just get my, my stream set up, set up a certain way to be able to do that, because I've got it set up so focused on doing the flights, um, that I'm not ready to just kind of pop another game on, but I'd like to do that. So, we'll see, you know, if I can get more time or... You know, just get more in a groove when to do things. Alright. Wanted to check our passengers. Okay, it's stopped at 71 passengers for some reason. No idea why. So I'm just gonna go, we're gonna throw the 120 on here. It's for some reason, being weird. So we do have all the passengers on board. And one limit, keep that the same. We have our takeoff speeds. We have our center of gravity, 5.75 for trim. Look in that green area, gotta get it between about that five and that next dash. Not Irish at all. I'm German, uh, Czech, and Hungarian. So kind of in from that western or not eastern, you know, southeastern kind of area of Germany, kind of where Czech and Czechoslovakia and Hungary all that come together. That's where uh, my grandparents and great grandparents all come from. All right, APU is started, so we're gonna go like that. And AP bleed on. AP gen. All right. Let's automatically set the The pressure did that. Departures did all those. Elevator trim, gangway. Let's get that to go away. Okay, not sure what's going on with my. Uh, And of course something broke and so now I can't uh... The problem with GSX is there's no way to like just cancel out of something. I'd like to live in Europe, that'd be kind of fun to live there for a while. 
Can I reset the Zithin? Maybe? Still waiting for boarding, baggage loading in progress. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, I think that. And now the engine hasn't started. <laughs> Which kind of sucks. Looks like we got another plane. Doing something. All right, well, let's get let's get into this. Uh, GSX is being finicky. It's a very finicky program. I'm very disappointed with it out of the box right now. Um, I mean, there are a lot of people are working on making it useful, but unfortunately, uh, I think that's something when you pay some money for something, it should just work out of the box. All right, so we got the APU going. Let's get the fuel pumps all on. I'm gonna go in here and make sure all the doors are closed again. Actually, release the ground power. Da, 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 da. Sorry, it's taking a little bit of time again. It always takes me longer to do this plane, especially when I'm playing with other stuff. We're actually doing pretty good. We're not that bad today. All right, so we've got the fuel pumps on. Over here, we're going to go get the electrical, hydraulics all on, anti-collision lights on, pack left, left pack and right pack off. And we are just about ready for the pushback. So let's see. Back in here, wheel chocks need to come off. Uh, I think it's ground services. Remove the wheel chocks. And I wish GSX worked right now. We need to set the parking brake for wheel chocks to request ground services. Oh, okay. Well, at least it gave me that warning. I don't think it's going to work. Oh, there we go. Prepare for pushback and departure. Okay, here we go. That's actually pretty cool. They have the, the, the sound pack there. You know, gives her a little bit of a, a Spanish, Hispanic, uh, yeah, Spanish accent. We're in Bolivia. Now, they do have to work on, I think they need to work on some of the animations. But she's put the pin in, which is real cool detail. Here's the tug from Jet Aviation. She's gonna lift this wheel and we'll be ready for pushback. And hopefully I'm ready for pushback. Looking at all the bells and whistles right now. Some brief, okay, I don't know what that means. Uh, let's see, we want to go to runway 16. I should have kind of figured this out earlier. Alright, runway 16, so we're going to want to have our tail facing to the left. Well, if we go the wrong way, we'll just go. All right, so wheel chocks removed and released the part. Okay, 
Okay, so we're gonna start the engine. So we'll go left ignition, ground. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the flight attendants for a safety demonstration. When the seatbelt light is fastened, please make sure that your seatbelts are fastened low and tight across your lap. To fasten, insert the metal fittings into one another and tighten by pulling on the loose end of the strap. To release your seatbelt, lift the upper portion. See, I like the Alpha Indy Group traffic injection better than the FS HUD ATC because there's actually planes moving around the airport, whereas it seems like the, the FS HUD ATC, they don't move around as well, and they're not as smooth. They kind of jerk around when they do move around. All right, so we're getting our pushback. Looks like she... All right, she's going to stop right there. We're going to set the parking brake. Children, now's the time to pick your favorite one, but secure your mask and then assist others. Keep your mask on until a member of the crew advises you it's safe to remove it. In the event that Turn the pilot decides lights. to take a trip, and let's do life vest is located in a pouch under your seat or between the engine armrests. Engine two. Only when exiting the aircraft. If your life vest does not inflate automatically, All right, we need to let them know we have a good engine start. Manual inflation. Each vest is equipped with a whistle and light. If necessary, your seat cushion can be used as a secondary flotation device. Like I said, when, when GSX Pro works, it looks it's really cool. Um, it adds a little extra to the immersion. Um, as I said, there's some things that don't work and it's, there's a, it's a little finicky. But I think I figured out how to get the engine. Well, what would happen is um, I'd get into the sim and I'd try to use GSX. Sometimes it would just work. Other times it wouldn't, and it would just it would start. Uh, it would say, "Oh, the GSX Quattol engine or whatever it is hasn't started." And it's like, "Um, what do I do about that?" But I guess I can actually start it manually after even when the sim is running. So that's that's a good thing. Okay, she pulled out the bypass pin. She's still. Kind of breaks the immersion a little bit that she's in the aircraft like that, but. It's really cool hearing the gates. You can tell a new plane is kind of spawned in because the gate starts uh, operating. It kind of cleared up. We had a lot of clouds before. Okay, she's holding the pin up. That means she, we are ready to go. All right. And is she gonna get out of my way so I can, oops, so I can actually uh, taxi? All right. So we do have our engine. We're gonna switch to Kant. Uh, turn on the taxi lights. Run away. Turn off the lights. Go to Gen 1 for power, yaw damper on, APU can come off. Oh, I forgot to turn the... <laughs> I forgot to turn the engine generators on. That's why you go through the checklist. I think we're still alive though. I think in reality it should just shut off our plane, I'm not sure. Packs back on. Uh, Anti-ice, we don't need that, but we do do the probe heat. Window heat. I'm doing a terrible job of following the the, uh, the plan here. Do -do -do, make sure I got everything. APU bleed off, it is. No, it isn't. There it is. APU bleed off. Pack left and right on. Pitot Pro switches on, window heat is required, yaw damper on, flaps select. So we want five, we can just click right here, put them in position. Who's that on the runway? Continuing, 
flaps auto brake set to RTO. Pushback is at an end. Yep, taxi lights and runway turnoff lights are on. TCAS test. We'll set the Taro once we're at the runway. So let's go. Uh, where do my planes go? No. Well, where do all the pl other planes go? We still have planes over there, so I don't know. All right, we're going to take Charlie into uh, Golf, and then Bravo, and then we'll kind of be on the runway going back. Hey, Kimberly. Or Kimberly? Is it Kimberly? Yeah, it'd be Kimberly. Whenever I see uh, that, I want to say Lay or Lie. I mean, depends depends on the name, I suppose. We have Burlai. Well, we say Burlai in, you know, in, in Milwaukee. We have a street called Burlai, but I believe it's Burley. Um, like Lord Burley under Queen Elizabeth the first. But oh, we say Burley. So Kimberly Ry Re Re Reese, Kimberly Reese, welcome on in. I wonder where that plane is. And oh, there's another little area over there. All right, we got the flight directors on auto throttle on IAS 250 knots for the first speed limit. We're going to go to 250. Kimberly Rise, all right. All right, we do need to double back, I think. We could actually probably take off from this point. Spoiler armed. Yeah, we're gonna go down and we'll turn around. Um, I'm. I. We might be able. To see if we were on like Vatsim or obviously real life, they might clear us to take off from Bravo right there. That is possible. Um, I'm not gonna risk it because I don't know. But it's eleven thousand over eleven thousand foot runway. We probably would have been able to take off right from there. But I'm gonna go down here. Spin around. Again, thanks all for coming in. Kimberly and Mika have been, uh, or Micah. Micah or Mika? I keep saying Mika, but it might be Micah. Uh, have been, have been chatting. Uh, just, just shout out and say, hey. We got 16 knot wind. You can see the, the tail, or the tail, the wind sock is, uh, nearly fully extended there. So that's realistic. I like that. It's always nice when things are doing what they should be doing. When everything else is doing what it's supposed to be doing and I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, that's 
that's pretty good, I think. Then it's all just point at me and go, man, you're bad at taxiing or flying this plane. So if you're just joining, we're uh, doing flight 170 of the world tour. We're flying into every country and territory uh, via, as much as possible, real commercial flights in the real planes and liveries, as much as possible. Uh, this plane, we are using the 737-700. In real life, it is done in the 800, um, but I couldn't get the livery for the 800. So we'll have to hold off the 800 for maybe until the next flight. I might, I think there's a livery just came out for uh, GOL. This should be in that. Clear that. All right. Uh, we are clear for takeoff. Make sure everything is ready to go. Landing lights are on. Position lights strobe and steady. We are ready to go. I want to check up top. I thought I turned the yaw damper on. I sworn I did that. Well, that's why we're doing the double check. Actually, should be doing our altitude here. Let's see, 1200. So we don't black out. So 1250. And then our cruise altitude. I know an X plane, if you didn't do that, you'd black out. All right, we're ready for takeoff. Here we go. Not sure why that thing does that. I feel like I'm, I'm always forgetting something on takeoff. Positive rate of climb. Any gear up. Yeah, I think my favorite flights are when we have like some clouds like this. Just gives that gives that 3D element. Let me know how the sound levels are if the game is too high and you can't hear me. I'm still trying to adjust that. It's hard for me to kind of monitor that. Yep, Bolivia used to be a Spanish colony. Yes it is. Or yes it was. I'm currently I have it downstairs, I'll bring it up later. I'm reading um Spain. Well, it's just called Spain, and then I think it's the, you know, Spanish Golden Age or whatever, uh, 1519 to 1684, 89, something like that. Um, and so that's definitely going to, it's not going to run through that book, that history book I'm reading is not going to run through the, obviously, the revolutions, because those didn't start until uh, the late 1700s, early, you know, early part of the 1800s. Uh, after the American Revolution and 
the French Revolution and things like that, but um, reading, I read a history on James Monroe, our, uh, the United States fifth president, and then uh, I've just done a, read a biography on Andrew Jackson, and both Monroe and Jackson in their various capacities had a lot of dealings with Spain and the Florida issue, Louisiana Purchase, Texas, um, Jackson more so, and obviously I've read about uh, James Polk, who is uh, who was our president, um, he was our uh, 11th president, and he was the president during the Mexican-American War, which uh, secured the annexation of Texas and much of the southwest of the United States. So there's a lot of a complicated history between America and Spain and America and the the former Spanish colonies which became independent and then uh, we've had run-ins over the years with but also early on a lot of a lot of hand-wringing and uh, discussion over well shouldn't we be supporting these uh, revolutions and sort of it was you know the United States you know Monroe John Quincy Adams uh, a lot of people were like, well, we'll support, we want to support them, but we also need to be careful not to tick off Spain because we're trying to buy Florida. We're trying to, you know, consolidate our hold on the eastern seaboard and everything. Oh, thanks for the subscription. Uh, let's see. Well, that's that's Russian. I'm not very good at my Cyrillic. I can do Greek, but not Cyrillic. But anyway, thank you if you just, uh, for, uh, just for the subscription there. Uh... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not good with my Cyrillic yet. I haven't studied that. Right now I'm doing Spanish and still doing my Chinese, brushing up on my Chinese. Alright, just looking through here, making sure. Because I'm not, like, I can't just fly this plane from memory. I have to kind of really think about what I'm doing from time to time. Alright, so we're climbing. We auto brake is off. Spoiler disarmed. Yep, landing lights off. Runway turnoff lights off. Wheel well lights off. Autopilot altitude set. Handoff departure uh, to center. We, I believe, have done that. I think we're still on terminal though. We'll, we'll switch. They'll, they'll switch automatically when we need to. Window heat on. Engine anti ice on under 10 degrees outside. I don't know where we get the. There it is. We're at plus 15, so we don't need to worry about that yet. Altimeter is at standard. All right, and then cruise, we're gonna maintain radio contact, uh, check our autopilot at FMC, and check the progress page and all that stuff. And once we uh, empty that center fuel tank, we will turn off the center fuel pump. You can already see we have a low pressure there. So that was, I don't know what's going on there. Let's uh, check. Climate maintain. Flight level 300. Contact LA. Point center. One, two, three, LA. Seven, nine, La Paz. La Paz Climate Center. Maintain. Flight level 300. Contact LA. Point center. One, two, three, decimal nine. Right. I'm going to three, turn off the seatbelt sign. Alright, there it is. There's the fuel for the center pump, so that's going to go off.
Yeah, quite the, quite a different, I, I, just flying over some of these areas is very different. Yeah, very different uh, landscape below us on this flight than previous flight. A lot, we were flying over the Amazon, and now we got a lot of uh, farm fields. And not the American, you know, North American or you know, United States style farm fields, but distinctly Brazilian and a Bolivian. All right, so you can hear some other, another Boliviana getting clearance. Alright, so right now about two hours remaining on the flight. Expected arrival two hours, just under two hours, 15 minutes, so... Hopefully we don't have any uh, major delays, because otherwise the passengers will get a little grumpy. Alright, Kimberly is saying that that is pronounced as Dan... Dan... Il Gargin. Gargin? Gargin or Gargin? Probably Gargin because it's probably the same. <clears throat> I know there's some some parts of Cyrillic. Every once in a while I'll see some Cyrillic. This one I nothing, I don't recognize anything. I think I I think I do know some of it just through making some of the overlays and stuff for Russian airports. But the uh, Some, sometimes it looks like I, you'll see like a Greek character or something and it'll be like, oh, okay, I can kind of guess what that is, but... Okay, so Dan, it's like the little H is more of an N, is an N sound, with backward N's or I's. Okay, yeah, so Daniel, Daniel, probably Daniel, Dan, Daniel Gargan. Probably, again, mispronouncing it. All right, we're climbing to 37,000 feet. Yeah, so we got to see a little bit of uh, GSX Pro. It, it worked decently. I didn't have too much problem with it. It did kind of screw up and get hung up um, when we wanted to push back, so I had to shut it off, restart it. But I think I figured out how I can actually restart it, and it restarted just fine. So we got to do the pushback. I think it's a great addition. We got to see the passengers walking on the jetway. On um, the jetway, now I'm a little... It's a little funny because what... Uh, those jetways are from Latin VFR and I paid about six dollars for those and it replaces all the default jetways and so far I've noticed I haven't had any missing sections of the jetways now which is really nice but what's funny is because GSX Pro also replaces jetways with its own stuff and it didn't look like it had replaced that one and so I'm wondering if I've now lost the GSX Pro replacing thing uh uh, Agel, uh, hey there, building liveries for the seven, the triple seven F. Can someone recommend? Uh, what do you mean? You are, yeah. Have you done Emirates? Are you so you're making some liveries for the triple seven F? What what triple seven F? For like Captain Sim triple seven or what? Like what triple sevens are available? Yeah, triple seven navy or freighter. Oh, 
Oh, oh, that's on the forum. Da, 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 da. I'm just looking. I just did a search. What triple sevens are available? Okay, next the next airliner for Misfits. Uh, the next PMDG airliner, which I think we kind of already suspected. But I guess because they were saying they were going to do a 747, which I don't know if I'm going to do a 747. Or I, I don't know if I'm going to get the, the 747, because we, we already have a 747. Salty is doing an okay job fixing that. I don't need all the bells and whistles of PMDG, but I'd like to get the, like the 777 would be a nice pickup. I'd like to get a 757. That'd be pretty good. Um, so right now, the only one that's out is Captain Sims, which I'm not going to be getting. Uh, I'm looking. But yeah, there's a little thing here that. Yeah, it looks like the 777 is going to be the next airliner from PMDG. That's going to be cool. Yeah, and I like some of the comments. I think I think the 777 from PMDG as the next plane for them to do. It makes a lot more sense than doing the 747. First, because we have a 747 default in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's serviceable, salty. The salty mod is making it better and better. Um, I don't know if it, it... I don't fly it enough, so I don't know how much... if it's as uh, far along as uh, Fly-By-Wire's A320, but... They're putting effort into that one, and it's already available. So I don't really need to spend $70 on a 747 from PMDG, even though I, I've seen wonderful things from what they did back in X-Plane and Prepare 3D. But a 777 makes sense, because we don't have a 777 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. There is one on the market, Captain Sim. Uh, I'm not sure how much that costs, probably between $20, $30, I think. And it's really not even worth that because it's just parts of the 747 and the 787 put together so it's not actually a 777 cockpit with the proper detail and everything so and and I, I like this comment it's like it makes more sense to do 777 not only because the 747 is already available in you know for free within the game or within the sim but there's very few 747s actually out there flying compared to 777s. There are a lot of 777s. There still are a few 747s, mostly cargo flying. And again, we have... We'll have... Uh... I lost my train of thought, but yeah, I'd rather have the triple seven. So I'm looking forward to that. Oh, what I'm really looking forward to, forward to is the uh, A380. Um, I don't know how much I'll be able to fly that though, because that's kind of a plane that you're going to fly on like a, you know, five, six, ten, twelve hour flights, right? Um, so it's kind of the same issue I have with the 747. It's like I don't have a ton of opportunity to fly it because it doesn't make sense for me to load up the 747 to fly on a half hour flight or something. And since I'm usually doing on these world tour flights, real life flights, very rarely am I running across a 747 flight. So. Yeah, I don't know. Asia, um, I would check. Have you checked Asia on uh, flightsim.to? There's a whole section on there. Let me see, I'll go check it too. But I'll bring it up for you. Flightsim.to. And let's uh do, 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 do. bring this up. Really? Yeah. Cargo Lux, yep. All right, we are at our cruise. Why can't I do what I want to do here?
All right, so flightsim.to. Yeah, let's see what's, uh, I think there's, where is it? Deliveries. Where is it? There, I think. Oh, here, delivery requests. So this is a good place. I don't know if he's still here, but if you are someone that does deliveries, this is where, this is a great place to go. If you don't have, if you're looking for ideas of deliveries to do, and you can't think of one, I mean, look at all these. Um, that's a pretty cool one. Uh, I think. So you can pick your plane that you want to do, and I'm, you know, like he wanted to do a triple seven freighter. So this is the Captain Sim one. There are no other ones I know of right now. Central Airlines out of China, Federal Express, Old Colors, FedEx, Concept. So there's quite a few available that are, people are requesting. I've requested a number, I've gotten a few done. So it's it does work, it's really cool. Actually, I'm surprised that there aren't a ton that aren't done. Uh, let's see, I want... I'm trying to think what... What livery? There's a few liveries I kind of want, you know, some fictional ones, so that maybe I don't have to buy another plane and stick on. Because there's a few that I'd like to maybe put. Instead of having to buy... I'm trying to think, there's there's a few planes that's like, I just don't have. I don't have a lot of planes. But, you know, I have the CRJ700. That can, that can fit in for a few other kind of planes. Uh, these smaller... Ones. And the big deal is like once I start getting to my island hopping in uh, the Caribbean, we don't have a ton of uh, <laughs> options, at least uh, livery wise sometimes. We got a little bit of cloud cover today. I like it. I really like, I think this is pretty cool. This is my favorite part of the, well, not my, I don't know if it's my favorite part, but this is why I really like doing this kind of tour thing where I just start fly um, from country to country because it kind of forces me to fly liveries that I wouldn't even think of. I, kn I don't know these airlines. And at some point, part of, my, part of me, I want to do almost a series where I fly, I just do a flight on every single airline in the world, which is crazy, but I, I think that'd be pretty cool at some point. Um, but right now it's going to be doing completing this world tour. We're barely, I think I'm probably maybe halfway through it. I don't know. Uh, we got a lot of ways to go. We're probably I'm looking at my let me look at my my plan here so far. Uh, we're going to get to New Zealand and we're, after doing some island hopping, after going through all of the Caribbean, South America, the Caribbean, back into North America, crossing over to Hawaii doing a few island a little bit of island hopping in the Pacific to get over to New Zealand and we'll have to do quite a bit more island hopping um, but we're gonna get to New Zealand we're gonna get to Auckland flight 236 so that's what 56 flights from now so we got quite a few flights uh, remaining here in this continent it took us a while to get through Europe I think it took almost a hundred yo know, well I think it took about 80 flights in Europe took about 80 flights in uh, Africa um, so I'm thinking yeah, it looks like about 80 flights. It's going to end up being about 80 flights here in uh, the Americas and then the Pacific. So, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to that. I'm always looking forward to getting to that next section of the world. I'm in this section of the world, and now I'm like, oh, I want to get over there. Um, even though, let's not get too fast. we got the Caribbean, and that's going to be pretty fun, all those islands. And we're going to be flying smaller planes, um, like the Cessna 208. I might pick up the either the Islander or the the Twin Otter for a few of those. Uh, we'll see what I need. But yeah, we got quite a quite a tour going here, and and then I'm also setting up kind of a concurrent 
uh, tour going on at the same time throughout the U.S. Um, trying to fit flights that are about between half an hour, anywhere under an hour, an hour, hour and a half. I kind of want to keep the flight short and kind of go to a bunch of airports that typically wouldn't go to. So um, I started this, I went from Appleton to Nashville and then Nashville to New Orleans, then New Orleans to Orlando. And that was originally, I was like, okay, whatever. Whatever the flight is, I just want to do flights around the United States. And then now I, I planned out a whole bunch and I'm trying to do less than an hour and a half. And so, okay, Orlando to Miami. Well, that's, according to the sim, it should take like 30 minutes. In real life, it takes like an hour, so I, I don't know. But I'm gonna go Orlando to Miami, then Miami to Tampa. So we're gonna do a bunch of flights in Florida there. And I think Tampa over to Mobile, Alabama, and then I'm not sure where next. I think up to Atlanta, maybe. <clears throat> but just bouncing around, going to some more regional or smaller airports in the United States that you don't think of when you're doing a flight, unless you're doing VFR or something. <clears throat> uh, we'll have a few more cargo flights on that one, too, because there's just some places where the only flight between A and B is a FedEx flight or a UPS flight or something, so... Um, I'm excited to do that part, and the plan is is that I'll try to do a world tour flight, and if the world tour flight is short enough, and it doesn't take up, because basically I can stream from about 6 in the morning until around noon, that's my plan on my days I stream. I want to do about 6 hours stream, uh, about lunchtime I want to be able to be landing and finishing the stream on whatever flight I'm doing. So that might mean we can do two flights. It might mean we can do three flights. Once we get to the Caribbean, there's a few flights where it's like a seven minute flight. So we're gonna be knocking out a few flights on the same stream. But I also wanna do, you know, like today, this flight is gonna be probably three, three and a half hours for the whole, you know, gate to gate, startup, shutdown, all that. Three and a half to four hours. Well, I'll still have a little bit of time, possibly be able to do that uh, flight from uh, Orlando, Miami. So that's kind of when I want to set up these shorter flights to fly in the U.S., get a few more CRJ, Canadian Regional Jet flights, and um, and kind of explore the U.S. because that's where I live. Um, once we finish doing that, of course, I want to go and fly. I want to fly all kinds of places and maybe do just fly between places in Spain, fly between places in Mexico, whatever it is. Uh, there's so many flights. As long as we're uh, flight simulator is going and uh, I have time uh, we're gonna be flying places and uh, doing these jet airliners but I also want to get into smaller planes and continue doing the Missouri River which I've been having fun doing so yeah that's the plan right now uh, this weekend have quite a bit of time because I have today off Saturday Sunday you know my regular I get two days off a week so Friday and Saturday this week were my days off because I don't work this weekend and then I have Sunday off because I don't have the weekend. And then of course, well, it's Labor Day here in America, so we get Monday off because the brewery is actually a shut down this weekend, which is not typical. Usually most holidays, they're working through the holiday. So if I get the holiday off, it's a good thing. So I got a four day weekend here. Uh, Sunday morning, we're gonna be going to church. So I don't know what we're, I'm gonna do with the stream. Uh, maybe if I do if I start a flight and so if it's a longer one if I can start a flight go to church come back and land uh, We'll see If not, I'll try to stream in the afternoon. Hopefully it doesn't get too hot That's one of the other reasons I want to stream in the morning because it's cool up here in this room in the morning in the afternoon It gets a little too hot So looks like the passengers are getting breakfast right now. I'm gonna see if I can bring that up so I'm gonna be honest. All right, here's Pack X. There's our passengers. You can see all of our flight attendants, and they have finished. So let me just click on a passenger here. Let's click on this one. This is uh, Manuel Manuel uh, Rodriguez. 48 years old on a business trip. He's content, but he's somewhat thirsty and somewhat tired, but he's not hungry. We just had the breakfast. So we get a little bit of information. Uh, this is Pack X. Uh, there's also self-loading cargo. I'm not sure how self-loading cargo is doing with uh, working with Microsoft Flight Simulator right now. 
Uh, maybe I'll give it a try again. I do like self-loading cargo a little bit more than Pack X. Pack X is a lot. It's it it does what it's supposed to do. It's it it's very good, um, and I really like how they got the the names. The people all look like well, yeah. Where they we're, we're flying from Bolivia to Brazil. Most of the people on this flight are going to be uh, Hispanic or Portuguese, right? You know, names. Uh, let's let's look at our one of our first class passengers. We got see on this one there's twelve, but in the in the in the PMDG there's only eight. So maybe I have to download one that so they match. So here we got Khalid Alexander, fifty four years old. He's also on a business trip. He's seated. He has his seatbelt off. He is thirsty and somewhat tired. Um, with Pack X, there's I don't think there's a way for me to. I don't think there is. There might be. Let me see. Let's check the settings. Um, no. Because I know with self loading cargo, you can actually uh, tell the flight attendants to go and give passengers uh, water or drinks. Um, so you have a little bit more control over the passenger comfort. Um, pack X, it's automated because that's kind of what it is in real life. Uh, the, pass the, 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 the captain isn't really up there going, Hey, um, I'm getting reports that the passengers are thirsty. You know, like you, you can see their bladder. Like self-loading cargo is crazy because you can actually see their bladder level. And, oh, this person's got to go to the bathroom soon. So I'm going to turn, you know, you could really mess with them and turn on the seatbelt sign. They can't, you know. You can see that person that didn't get up or wasn't able to get to the bathroom before the, the approach and landing process began. You can see, uh, and then they, they'll turn different shades, colored depending on their satisfaction or whatever. Another business trip, not hungry, but again, very thirsty. So I think we need to have a Guadalupe. Uh, we need to have a, a drink uh, service here. Gontekel? Yeah, it looks like a lot of people are thirsty. This person's drinking, so I don't know what happened there.
Hey, Creepy, how are you doing? It's been a while. Been you haven't been streaming much lately, have you? I haven't been in touch with a lot of the other guys either. Well, that's because I'm so busy. Busy moving into the new house. Then I have to hold this guy. He's crazy. Yeah, I try to I'm trying to do these flights early in the morning because then I can have by lunchtime then I can have like the rest of the day to take care of this guy do house stuff because he'll eventually go take a nap I think in a couple minutes he seems to be waking up earlier and earlier Ah, hip replacement. Hurts to sit for a long period of time, so streaming is kind of hard right now. Okay, we were wondering. I was like, yeah, I haven't seen you. And I was like, what happened? Daily Mail's decided to replace your flight yoke. Cool. Yeah, I don't have a flight yoke. I just have the, the joystick, a flight stick. So I'd like to get a yoke eventually. Be nice to go with, with the planes that fly yokes, you know, like the Boeings and some of the smaller planes. What are you gonna say? <laughs> say hello. Thanks for subscribing Roblox videos. Thank you. Yeah, if you guys haven't hit that subscribe button already over on uh, YouTube, that'd be great. Well, I'm, I feel like I'm sitting in the, I, I feel like I'm sitting in the captain's seat, but maybe he is. Depends on where we put him later. I'll put him over here. Oh, maybe if I get a yoke, then then I'll then he can play with the stick. He needs something to play with. <laughs> He's always grabbing at the, always grabbing at the microphone. It'll be more of a, yeah, flight stick. Yeah, yokes are expensive. Flight sticks. You can get this. Uh, you can get the Thrustmaster one that I got. You know, the whole set with the pedals and the throttle there. I don't, it was only a couple hundred bucks, I think. The Airbus Captain Pack. Yeah, that's yeah, that's basically the Thrustmaster uh, flight stick, but it's set up more like the Airbus, the real Airbus, and everything. So, yeah, that's a cool one. I haven't been following it closely, so I don't know how it 
how it's working and if there's still issues with it. I know there were some issues, but I'm a little behind on all that. Well, that makes sense though. I mean, if you're gonna have four, four engines, you should need uh, four uh, little throttle quadrants to do it. I mean, it sucks that you can't map it to just two because. Yeah, well, this is the, this is the new house. I'm streaming in the morning right now because it's just it's too hot in the afternoon right now this time of year and also my wife and the baby usually are sleeping so if I get up my time if I get up my usual time to go to work and then I just start streaming instead on my day off I can usually get a at least one flight in before they even get up and then you know, I'm planning on you know, being able to do you know stream until around noon or before noon and then Yeah, I think it's. I still gotta. I still gotta mess with my microphone and get the sounds right. But it definitely doesn't have as much echo because it's got a carpeting in here. So, but there's no the air conditioning. Just isn't powerful enough to get up here. Well, once it gets to the afternoon, it's a it's a nice heat box. Yeah, I think we'll be able to get another flight in. So, I'm debating if I want to do the flight, the next world tour flight, or if I want to do my U.S. flight. I think I'll do the U.S. flight, and maybe we'll do a couple of those. Yeah, we're definitely not in, uh, in rural Australia. Uh, I'm right, I'm, I can walk to work now, so that's kind of nice, getting a lot of exercise in, walking to work. You know, I, I easily get 12,000 steps a day because I get about 2,500 steps just to walk to work and, and then another 2,500 back and then all the walking I do at work in and out of the truck to the back of the trailer, open the doors to the front of the trailer, back and forth, right? Yeah, I can look right down into where I work into the valley and the parking lots. I can I can hear the trucks backing up every once in a while in the lot nearest us. Uh, the big thing is we got the train. The train. There's one street that it crosses here near us, and he just lays on that horn all hours of the night. So I don't usually hear it. I'm out. Once I get to sleep, I'm out because I'm just tired. <laughs> 16 16 hour days are a lot of work. I mean, 12 hour day and then four hours, you know, about an hour in the morning and then a couple hours at night. And it's a couple hours at night is 
wrangling him up and doing dishes and making sure he's not getting into too much trouble. I think he's going to eat my uh, stereo headphones. Yeah, but we don't have too huge of a yard, so uh, yard work's not too bad. Hello, Zulek. Yeah, he was just trying to—he was just trying to unplug my uh, USB. Uh, stick that controls the mouse and keyboard so I would have been trying to move the camera and it wouldn't work or do anything for that matter. Come on, you get your cardboard box and something to play with. Oof. What's a paddock? It wants to extend a nearby residential zone into a massive paddock. What's a paddock? Hey, okay. let go. Zulik's flying from Orlando to New York. Cool. Yeah, I think the next flight, I think we'll have enough time. I mean, I could do the next world tour flight from uh, Sao Paulo down to Uruguay, but I'm, I think I'm gonna opt for the US tour flight. We'll, we'll get in the A320 and we'll fly from Orlando down to Miami, which will be a short flight. And then maybe we'll do Miami to uh, Tampa. Both of those are pretty short. We'll see how it is. Oh, a field. So he's just gonna extend a nearby residential. Oh, he's, oh, okay. He's extending a residential area into a big field. So it's, so you're gonna be more houses, more of those kind of cookie cutter houses. Yeah, we get a lot of that around here, too. Right on the attack to the 
Uh, yeah, PMDG is... I, I was just talking about this earlier. I think they're gonna... It looks like they're gonna probably be doing this. Because they've said they're going to be doing... Their plan was to do the 737 and the 747 and the, the 777. So, it looks... Sounds like the next one is gonna be the 777. Which makes a lot of sense, actually, because... Uh, we already have the 747 available uh, from a Zobo. Uh, salty mods. Salty's doing a lot of good stuff with it. So there's no... I don't really think there's a need for PMDG to jump in the, into the 747 and charge 120 bucks for a plane right now because it, it's simply... I wouldn't buy it. I probably wouldn't buy it. I mean, I know there's... You know, obviously, you know, they've done some really cool things, uh, especially with the cargo one, like the nose would open up and you'd be able to the cargo one. That's, I'm not saying they're not going to do a good job on it, but it, do I want to spend 70 to $120 on a plane that I already have, right? It's the same reason I don't have the Phoenix A320, because I already have the fly-by-wire. It's free. I'm going to save my money for planes that to fill in that I don't have, which is why I got the 737, because I want to be able to fly the Boeing version, you know, the mid-range one uh, as well. Um, but the 777 makes sense because we don't have a 777. We have the Captain Sim one, but, you know, if you want one that's actually, they put some good effort into it. Um, I, I'm not saying you can't have a inexpensive version, but, yeah, Salty's got the 747. We already have it. And I saw a comment is that on, on the forum where people were talking about this, that the 740 or the 7 is going to be out next, or it's going to be the next one PMDG is going to be moving on. Um, there's not a lot of 747s currently flying in the world anymore. So it makes more sense to make a plane that people are going to, you know, go with real life operations, which is the 777. That's not to say that the 747 isn't a great plane to have, but we already have it. So I, I'd rather get, I'd rather get a 757 or a 767 or a 777. Right, I'd rather get those planes that are out there that we don't have and are real planes that are flying currently in the air more often. Um, it's the same with, you know, I, I'm not against making planes that aren't flying in the air. Of course, it's similar. You can fly, fly any plane. We have the Boeing 247. How many of those are flying in the air right now? Yeah, Captain Sim is Captain Sim. So, I mean, if you want to get the Captain Sim 777, that's yeah, up to you. I'm, you know, I'm typically not going to buy a plane like that. Um, that isn't, you know, if I can get a plane for $20, I mean, I like the price point, like $20, $30 for a plane, but if it's not actually the plane, then there's no reason for it. So yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to that, the 777 coming out, see what that'd be like. Um, I don't know if I'll get it, but. You know, to, for that to be out there as an option, that'll be good. Um, I'm looking forward to the, obviously the next big free one that I know of. I think I just saw something else, but the big one is the A380 that Fly by Wire is working on. That's looking really good. Uh, let me see if I can find some. What's a good? What's a good? What are the good websites? I think. I need to get my uh, flight sim news. Let's see what we can see. I plan to buy the 737 so I can do some regional operations, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it depends. Like, I, there was a part of me that was thinking I wasn't going to even bother getting the, the 737 because, okay, I've got the the Airbus. That's the same. It's similar. It's, you know, back in X-Plane, I didn't buy any plane. I flew, exclusively flew the Zebo mod for the, the 737 over there. I didn't get the PMDG. But I was like, I've heard good things about PMDG. Let's see what it's like. And... I'm kind of kicking myself that I got the 700 and then I got the 800 also, so I spent 100 for, like, what, $140 on two planes. It's like, what am I doing? It's, it's nothing. It's like, all right, you know. I haven't tried out the failures and stuff, so, I mean, I'm sure that's pretty cool. And But, yeah. 
kind of kicking myself a little bit that I got the 700. I think I should have held out for the 800. I would have spent for that, got the 800 in my pocket, and then I could have used that 70 bucks on a couple other planes that would be nice to have. All right, let's see. Let's look through what's going on. All right, so I'm just looking at flight FS Elite. Uh, we got the Carinado. Carinado just released the Pilatus PC-12. I feel like, the, isn't there a PC-12 out there already? What, what's the Pilatus that's available in uh, Flight Sim that came for free? Uh, Tyler, I'm not on multiplayer. I don't think i am got multiplayer on right now. Yeah, I mean, it depends. I mean, it all depends on what plane you're going to fly. I don't think it's not a flight sim if you don't have the 737. I mean, obviously it is. It's just, can you, do you have it to be able to fly? And if that's the plane you want to fly. And I would have, I would have loved to have come over to Microsoft Flight Simulator and them had the 737. Of course, we would have had to have a great modding community. And maybe Zebo would have come over, the, the Zebo mod crew would have come over and, you know, messed with it over in Flight Simulator if the 737 had been native. But we got the Airbus, and that's pretty cool because now I now I got to I got to kind of learn the Airbus systems, which I really like. It's a lot easier. And then the uh, I'm now I'm learning reacquainting myself with the 737, which I flew a ton in X plane. Uh, Tyler is doing a flight from New York to Jacksonville, JFK to uh, Jax on JetBlue. Awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing after this flight. I think. I mean, I probably could fit in another world tour flight. The next world tour flight is about two and a half hours also. But I think I'm going to do the... I think I'll do some U.S. tour flights. Um, they're short. Uh, the one I'm planning on next is Orlando to Miami and then Miami to Tampa. So we'll probably do that next. And I'll go with that just so I don't... I don't want to jump in to do two two and a half hour flights and then end up running too long and then my wife gets grumpy. If I do that, that's why I kind of I'll do a world tour flight and if it's a really short world tour flight, maybe I'll be able to do two of them. Uh, especially once we get to Caribbean, there's gonna be a lot more hour less than an hour flights. But then my U.S. tour, what I've done is I've I've planned a whole bunch of flights that are less than an hour and a half. They're all less than an hour and a half. So. It's probably, if you're doing VATSIM, definitely it's probably easier. <laughs> um, I don't know, I like it. I like I like flying everywhere. Um, sometimes the U.S. gets boring, but it depends on where I'm flying. And I think what I'm doing now is, like, I, I'm doing a lot more very short flights. Like, out, like, hour and a half or shorter. And so like Orlando, Miami, Miami to Tampa, Tampa to Mobile. So I'm going to be hitting a lot of airports that typically we don't fly to. And some of these airports are going to look pretty rough probably because there's not much out there to make them look better. Um, but I'm looking forward to some of the airports I'm planning on flying into. It'll be pretty cool. There's some pretty good freeware out there. Maybe I'll crack the wallet open and start buying some airports. I don't know. We'll see. I always figure like, I always feel like an airport to me seems like a, a weird investment because it's like okay I'm gonna spend 10 bucks on something that I'm gonna maybe fly into once or twice um, which is why it makes sense like obviously if you're gonna fly there constantly you know, you're gonna do operations in and out of there all the time but right now with what I'm doing it doesn't make sense because there are some airports especially here even in South America Central America that would be great to have for these flights but it's like okay I'm only going to fly into it. How many times are you going to fly in and out of it? So. But yeah, I think our next uh, flight here on the stream today is going to be um, uh, Orlando to Miami. And I just need to finish setting that up on YouTube. And make sure I got everything. I think I have everything else ready for that. What are we flying over right now? This is a uh, decent sized city. All right, we're about halfway. We're flying over Campo Grande in the Mato Grosso do Sul, which I assume is uh, South Mato Grosso. That's what I'm guessing that is, because it's also the state of Mato Grosso just north of us. So 
We're in the South Mato Grosso, I'm guessing what that means. In Portuguese. Yeah. So we're about halfway. Um, we're almost... We're about midway through the state of Mato Grosso do Sul. Uh, once we cross this river, we're going to be crossing a river. Uh, Represa Porto Primavera. We'll actually be crossing that. And we'll then be into uh, the state of Sao Paulo. And we'll be headed to Sao Paulo. So we are in Brazil now. Oh, we're making a little bit of a turn here, it looks like. Uh, I don't know. What kind of... What should we do for a special 1K flight? And it's so quiet in the cockpit. I've tried to do long haul. Yeah, long haul. I mean, I, I like to do. I'd like to do some long haul, like overnights. Uh, the problem right now with doing long haul overnights is that I'd have to start it in the evening, and it is really hot in this room in the evening. That's why I'm streaming mornings right now. Um, I'm getting up at my normal time. I get up, which is 4:45 in the morning. And then I start streaming 6, 6.30. Today, 6.30. I'm glad I set it for 6.30 because uh, some things broke. Just, it seems like clockwork every time I want to stream. You know, so I'm glad I gave myself that extra half hour. But um, I do that because it's cooler in the morning, obviously. And then in the afternoon, it warms up. So maybe as we get into the winter, and it's, it's still going to be warmer up here than it is downstairs, I think. But... Um, obviously won't be as hot. Uh, hello, Gwishnu. Gwishnu so said Dewo 17. Gwishnu. Welcome on in. AGL's back. Uh, done making delivery. Wow. Just adding a few things here and there. It's named City of Reykjavik. Wow, that's quick. I didn't know. You... It took me a lot longer to make deliveries when I was doing it in X-Plane. And I only made like two. I suppose once you get... No, I made three. Once you get the hang of it and you know how to do it, then you know where the lines all line up. And it depends on the livery too. I mean, if it's a simple livery. Like this one would probably be a little bit difficult because just the way, unless you're doing it in a 3D thing, you're just painting on it. it the way if it's flattened out and the parts are split, you, you get these nice curves and stuff in. I was gonna ask that, yeah. I was like, hmm, is that, where is, where is Gwishnu? found it yeah indonesia awesome i can't wait to get over there um on this world tour obviously i flew over there in x plane but i think it's going to look a little bit better here in microsoft flight simulator so we are on flight 170 of the world tour um indonesia i haven't planned out that far but uh we're going to be out in the pacific a little bit coming out of hawaii we're going to be in french polynesia and the real far east of the Pacific, uh, just south of Hawaii over there, um, and then into Auckland, uh, New Zealand by flight 236. So Indonesia is going to be probably in the flights in the 240s, 250s, depending on how I set the flights up. But it's going to be it's going to be a little while. Um, of course, remember that there is going to be we'll be able to knock out a few two, three world tour flights. A day on some of these some of these streams because once when we get into the Caribbean those will be just short little hops uh, going up and then coming down pretty quick so and then there'll be some long ones um, especially once we get out in specific we're gonna have some good five hour long five six hour long hauls so I don't know yeah uh, Tyler was saying uh, will we do like a long haul like a special flight for the 1k I don't know I don't know what we'll do special because Awesome. All right, AGL has another one. You should look at uh, posting it on posting your liveries on flightsim.to because definitely people will be able to find your liveries then and 
be a great addition. Um, yeah, I don't know what we'll do for 1K. Uh, long haul. Long haul I'd like to do... Um, I usually try to do those overnight, and we tried to do one with El Israel. And it just, from uh, Tel Aviv to New York, and it just kept crashing. I did, I tried it twice. Well, the first time I had, and it was more of a user error, and so I just canceled the flight. And then the second one did crash about five hours in, so. Uh, where does this fly? We are flying from... Oh, that's someone else. Uh, we are flying from Santa Santa Cruz de la Sierra in Bolivia, South America, to uh, Sao Paulo, Brazil. So, uh, Bolivia to Brazil. Oh, what um, what sim are you making liveries for, Asia? Yeah, so we're, yeah, this flight is, and again, all this information, I have it in the overlay on top, <laughs> Gwishnu, and obviously the title. So if you're ever wondering what airport we're flying from and to, uh, it's right on the top. Um, but yeah, we're, out, we're over in South America, and we're flying from Bolivia to Brazil. And this is, uh, we're on Boliviana de Aviación. Uh, flight 736, I believe. Can't read. Yep, 736. We're in the Boeing 737-700 from PMDG. HL just gave me the 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 Medar data right now for uh, for Sao Paulo. That's from it looks like an hour ago now. I'm thinking. Got wind, five knot wind, so not too bad. 22 degrees out, so a nice day down there in Sao Paulo. It's very, I'm, I'm a little confused, but I, I suppose we're still, pre, we're pretty close to the equator, so even if, yeah, because we're in the southern hemisphere now, so it's actually technically um, early, we're actually starting to get into early spring, or late winter, early spring. And I did just switch over the, I, I use um, the John Habashi's four season pack for the trees. And we've been on summer in the north and winter in the south. Um, now we're and we're in the south, so everything's gonna be flipped. So um, I just switched it to early, early autumn, late or late summer, early autumn. Obviously, in the southern hemisphere, it's gonna be late winter, early spring, and so we should start seeing a few trees uh, sprouting here. Of course, we are close to the equator right now, and so it's 22 degrees. I'm thinking well, it's supposed to be winter down here, but we're not that far down. Just like if we were flying in Miami. Our next flight in Orlando, Miami. Well, it's summer, obviously, in the northern hemisphere everywhere. But even if it was, if we were in the winter, and we were flying Miami, Phoenix, it would be a little bit warmer than flying in Chicago or Toronto or where my area of the country. Kimberly is flying from Victoria, Canada, to Los Angeles in an A220 retro livery of Air Canada. What sim are you using for that? Is, that, is there an A220 full available in Microsoft Flight Simulator? And I, that's why I'm asking if you are, you know, what sim you're on. Infinite Flight. Yeah, I've never looked in the... Now it, <clears throat> Infinite flights just on a uh, like on like your flight like on an iPad or I think you can use it for. I have to look. Here. Let me look. Cause I think I I think I took a look at it before, but Infinite flights. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's for Apple and Google Play. That's pretty cool. I mean, I'm just looking at, I'm just looking at some of the the video they're playing here, and it, I mean, it's 
you know, it's not Microsoft Flight Simulator levels of graphics, but they also aren't too bad. I mean, it's almost X-Plane level, I'd say. <laughs> X-Plane 11. So that's it's not bad. Now, it's, I think it's all free, isn't it? Or do you have to pay for something? I mean, heck, I'm just looking at the ATC. The ATC almost looks better than Microsoft Flight Simulator. Oh, it requires an active... Okay, there is there's a pro version. But it looks pretty cool. I, I, I might have to just look into I mean, the only thing is, is yeah, it's for your iPad or for phone. I don't think you can get it for PC itself. Flight Gear. What's Flight Gear? Is Flight Gear another... Yeah, it is, yeah, another one. Flight Gear Flight Simulator. It's just crazy how many flight simulators are available. You know, for people who don't want to spend as much money. Awesome. I'm gonna, I'm just, I'm gonna have to just kind of take a look at these. I, I've never really looked. So, AJL's last flight was Belfast, Ireland to Larnaca, uh, Larnaca, Cyprus. Awesome. I've been to Larnaca in the sim. I think in X-Plane. I don't know if I flew there in here. We did fly to Cyprus. We must have flown to Cyprus. Unless I skipped over Cyprus. <laughs> We're gonna have to go back and catch it on the back end of this uh, flight. Or uh, this world tour. Okay, you have to pay for the app. But it's a one-time purchase. Is it a subscription or a one-time purchase? Yeah. Okay. I'm looking on FS Elite, I'm just looking through like some information on what's coming out for Flight Simulator. Uh, Carinado releases has just released the Palatis uh, PC-12. A few more airports are coming out. A ton of airports are dropping and it's really cool. I, I, I like the look. I just, I just don't have much money. Too much payment for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yeah, it's expensive. It, these simulators are expensive. We got some St. Barth scenery coming out. There's so much. I'm I, like, I see the scenery stuff. And I'm like, ooh, I'd like to get that. And then I'm like, oh, well, like as I was saying, it's like, how many times am I going to be at that place? How many times am I going to be at St. Barth? Now, if I'm flying there all the time, yeah, that'd be cool. And I mean, it would still be cool even just the one time, but for the amount of money, I can't justify it. I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm a penny pincher, I guess, sometimes. I already felt like I spent way too much on this one. Uh, let's see. Any builds. I saw something about any builds here or something. So, any builds. Okay, any builds has announced a continuation of their partnership with Microsoft. Under the partnership, any builds previously announced they're bringing their highly anticipated Airbus A310 to Microsoft Flight Simulator for its 40th anniversary edition. Now, I think. Okay, and then they're also bringing a Curtis JN4 Jenny and a Grumman G21A Goose, which are a couple older older planes. That's cool, some more older planes. Um, but any build is going to be bringing the Airbus A310. Now, I, I thought I saw somewhere that that's going to be free. They're going to be bringing the A310 into the flight simulator for free. So we'll, we'll be getting another new free plane. Here, Microsoft Flight Simulator, so that'd be cool. I like free planes. <clears throat> there it is. Any builds Airbus 310. All right, I 
So any builds Airbus A310 is coming for free with the 40th anniversary edition of Misfits. Awesome. That's cool. I, another plane. I don't know how many. Let's go over to uh, Flight Aware. I don't know how to search for planes. That's not how I do it. Way to search. Browse by aircraft type. I want an A310. I could type. A310. Okay, there's two A310s flying. They're both uh, over here in Iran. Mahan Air. So there's a couple 310s. So it's not a extremely uh, extremely uh, popular plane. Well, Air Transat. And there's obviously a few. But these are I don't know. It'll be a cool plane. And it'll be cool to have for free. And if it pops up on our world tour, we will definitely fly it. Let's check it out. I thought we were going to Riga. Like this flight? We're going to Riga? No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, I went to Riga a while back. Yeah, that was a while ago. And again, I think I did that in... Well, maybe I didn't. I, I know I... I know I edited Riga Airport in X-Plane, but we went, I think I never flew to it, actually, in X-Plane. Uh, Kimberly, one purchase for the app, but if you want all deliveries, planes, and world map, you have to have a subscription, and my subscription costs me a hundred bucks a year. Yeah, so that's the question. Which one is a better value? I mean, obviously, if you don't have a big gaming PC, Microsoft Flight Simulator is kind of out of reach. But, like, you could do Microsoft Flight Simulator and almost have all, yeah, you know, again, you're not gonna have all the planes and all the deliveries and all the, you, you, you have the whole world map, you have all the airports, now the quality of the airport's gonna vary, um, and you can always buy airports and stuff that are handcrafted. Planes, you get, obviously you get the planes that come with the sim, and then whatever free ones come out that are great, and of course, you got the Airbus, which is, you know, almost, you need more than that, I mean, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, which one's, which one's more expensive, I don't know. Depends. It all depends. I mean, obviously, if you went for all the liveries, all the planes, most liveries, and I don't know why anyone pays for liveries in Microsoft Flight Simulator, to be honest. You don't need to. There's free liveries, and they work. And honestly, liveries should be free. I don't know why. People should not really be able to make money off the livery. I mean, I get you're putting in work, and but the I, I feel like there's a copyright issue there. You know, I mean, there's been people shut down for making free liveries that are using copyrighted stuff like these logos and these schemes and stuff. So it's a very interesting thing, but yeah, I mean, if you were to get all the planes and all the airports and everything you could buy in Marcel Flexner, yeah, you'd be easily thousands and thousands of dollars. Yep, yeah, that's exactly it. It's like, if you don't have the Xbox and the PC, you know, Infinite Flight is gonna be your option. And that's, I mean, it, I, Sounds like it's a pretty, is it pretty stable too? It's like, I mean, I have, I don't know how much time I spend just trying to get a flight simulator to, to work <laughs> some days. All right, let me look at this. So we, they're bringing in the A310. That's gonna be awesome. Um, it's gonna be absolutely free. That's awesome. Another free, so we're gonna have the air, we're gonna have the A320 from Fly by Wire. We're gonna have the A310 here. Uh, already, these pictures are looking pretty good. These, I mean, granted, these pictures, these are liveries, so I'm not freaking out, but pretty cool. That looks cool. Nice fly pad there. That looks really cool. Uh, let's see, the, 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 the 3D model's been entirely retextured. Overall audio scape is also a core focus. That's cool. They also promise a highly authentic simulation of the A310 systems and flight model. Uh, the FMS will allow full lateral and vertical guidance modes. That's amazing that it's releasing for free. 
Um, but I'm I'm excited about that. That's that's awesome. Um, and again, that the A three eighties in the works from Fly by Wire. I think there's an A three twenty or a two twenty that people are working on. I mean, there's a lot of or there's an A three fifty that is being worked on for free. So there's a number of free planes that that seem to have quality to them. And we'll just have to wait and see if they actually pan out as quality aircraft. But uh, let's see, it's stable when you keep the charger in, but it does do well. So it's stable when you're charging when you have an external power source. But if you're like really going mobile with it, you might not be as stable. Or the other way around. I hope it's not the other way around. But no. I don't know which one I'd rather have. I mean, honestly, I think I'd I'd probably be stationary when I was flying anyway, but it'd be pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool, though, that you can do flying when you're, you know, in the car or, you know, at the doctor's office or whatever. Sorry. Oh, yawning. All right, we're 40 minutes out. So, yeah, unfortunately, we're missing the, the unfortunate thing with the FS HUD ATC is that the call signs it misses, it's missing a few call signs or it doesn't recognize a few call signs. So, we've been hearing a uh, few other planes, uh, 1494 and 3675, those are either GOL, G -O -L, GOL, or um, Amazonas, because those are the two that are not working right now. Um, but if we do have an Azul, uh, an Azul flight, um, we'll hear that call sign called out. All right, I, what I wanted to do, I'm going to step away for a second here, because I need to grab my... I scratched it down on paper my planned flight so I need to I know the next flight is Orlando Miami but I need to get the like actual flight number and make sure I have the actual it's the actual uh, which airline it actually is I think it is Spirit will be in the A320 I believe but I gotta get that and I'm gonna set up a YouTube uh, set up the next stream I will link that in here a few times for you guys who are watching on YouTube so you can jump over there or open that in another window um, because once this flight's over, once we're done with this this flight and got shut down, passengers are all off and everything, um, I'll end the stream on YouTube because I like to keep each each flight its own video. So if you want to go back, you can watch this one flight. It's not a seven-hour thing. You're looking for it. Um, on, on, Twi on Twitch, we'll go to a uh, an intermission. I'll set up the next flight. We'll start the YouTube stream, and we'll be back in, and we'll do a nice, nice hop over there, domestic flight. For, uh, for at least for me, for the U.S., uh, from Orlando down to Miami, and then we'll kind of look at the clock and see how it's going. Maybe we'll do Miami to Tampa as well. Um, let me just look here. Part of me is thinking I should do two flights. Maybe we'll do two flights tomorrow, to be honest, because tomorrow, if I don't do the flight today from uh, Sao Paulo down to uh, Uruguay, uh, today, well, we can do that one, and we can get in the flight from Uruguay over to Chile. We can do those those two flights, and then maybe do a U.S. tour flight also. So we'll, I think today we'll do a couple of U.S. tour flights maybe, and then tomorrow we'll do a couple world tour and a U.S. tour flight. We'll kind of sh see how it works out, and then Sunday it's gonna be kind of up in the air what we're doing. Uh, we're gonna be going to church, and that kind of throws off the schedule because while I could start a stream early, maybe I'll get a stream in before. Um, could do maybe a U.S. tour flight because I at least I want to be able to fly. I have four days off. I want to be able to fly all four days and get a couple of flights in each day because it kind of sucks when you have a whole day off and you don't get to fly. And uh, without charger, it's unstable and battery beating. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right, so I'm gonna step away. So don't be step away grab that schedule and I'm just gonna set up that next flight on YouTube so we'll go external view here and
All right, so we just got uh, Brasilia Center, Boliviana 736, expect Zerez, Evra 1 Delta, Rival Loman, ILS, November approach, runway 09 left. Okay, so let's, I just want to check my chart, make sure I have the right. Right, let's see, November. I'll also do that. ready for descent so we will see our top of descent is right there Ready for descent. So they want us to see direct. So we can just cut that off. We'll just go straight in. Everall. Everall. Alright, so we're direct to Everall. Ninety-eight miles to Everall. Uh, top of descent coming up. Hopefully, it'll give us the clearance in time so that the uh, the VNAV can just do its thing. While we're at it, we'll look over here at the radio. 
and put in our ILS. So the ILS is 110.7, so we're gonna get that in right here on the nav. 110.7. There we go. So that below us is part of Rio Tiente. I'm guessing it's been dammed up or something, creating this kind of reservoir. for the row holes. Key pieces of information is our ground pressure 1021. Also want to make sure we get in our landing altitude, which is going to be 2,461 feet is the airport. So we just gotta roll this up to 2450. Yep, saw your previous comments, yeah. So it's a, uh, so it's like a throwback. Yeah, you said that was like a throwback for uh, Trans Canada. So it's got the current Air Canada and it's got the it's pretty cool livery. I'll have to check it out.
Okay, see, so you can see the plane has decided to slow down because it's supposed to be descending at this point. But for some reason, we're not descending. So, yeah. Because we haven't been cleared. So, we're going to see what they do. Hopefully, they clear us soon. I've had this issue a few times, so I don't know why we're. Let's see if I can control the speed. See, we're really slow now. There we go. Seatbelt signs on for the descent. Yeah, it is very Welsh, last name. Cambria or Wales. All right, descending. We got a pretty steep descent because we got that all that we lost all that speed. So, plane is doing its thing. Yeah, I didn't have too much, too many problems with the descent uh, before, but now I'm seems like the against more issues. Just like the in-game ATC, it's like, well, well, why, why are we doing this? All right, so we're going direct to, to what is it, Everall? Everall, yeah. So we're already skipping. Who's that for all? Yeah, we're already kind of skipping parts of the descent here. Uh, we need to be at Everall. Let's my flight plan. Let's see, do I get any information here? <laughs> That'd be nice. Uh, Everall, Everall, Everall. There it is. Alright, so at Everall, we need to be below 210, above flight level. So about 20,000 feet is what we're aiming for out of Everall. If they could clear us down there, that'd be nice. Should be already below 240. So, this ATC is struggling now for some reason.
We'll go full flaps. We also want to set the course for our ILS, which is 95 degrees, so we're going to set that in here. This uh, camera would not tilt over like this. We should already be at 20,000 feet. Uh, we're a little high. Uh, but we do have time. I think. Yeah, they give a weird clearance here lately. There we go, 190. So we should already be at 190. Uh, at this next waypoint, so we're going to be a little bit above. Or we need to be above 190, so we're fine. Still doing fine. Um, we need to be below 140 when we before we make our next turn. 14,000. No, not too many hours. I mean, I've only been up. It's only been about three hours here of a stream. Well, I gotta get it done in the morning before. Afternoon, kind of want to get stuff done. It's hot up here in the afternoon, so I'll try to get a flight or two in in the morning. Hopefully, I can do another flight. We'll see. Uh, it seems like people are getting restless downstairs, which is not the plan. The plan is supposed to be on, but I guess I at least get one flight in. <laughs> yeah, well, right now it's just it's hard at night because you know my wife and baby are up at night, and I need to kind of you know make dinner, take care of him. You know, and then I'm getting tired and if I have to work the next morning, you know, on my day off, it's like at night, it might, I might have to work the next morning so that I can only fly so late. Plus it's right now, this time of year, it gets really hot up in this room, this new room now, so. All right, so speed's going back up so we can descend really rapidly. <laughs> Our transition point is 8,000. That's going to be our transition altitude. I don't think I can set it anywhere. There it is. We'll put 8,000 in. Well, I also work 12 hours a day, so it's, there's such limited time. And right now he's he's at that point where you gotta you gotta constantly be giving him attention, otherwise he's getting into trouble. All right, what is this? What are we flying over right now? Okay, we're making a really weird turn here, going we're kind of going to the northeast right now. 
We just gone straight South Paul's off to our right right now. Uh, that's going to be uh, Campinas down below us, and we just kind of went past Campinas International Airport. Sao Paulo's right over there in the distance. Alright, continuing our descent to 14,000. Uh, I haven't got any speed issues yet, uh, but we're going to need to slow down. Okay, it's telling me I got to go to standard because we're at under 18,000. I don't know why that it should have changed to the what I have it set to in here 8,000 well on our way out it switched at 5,000 so I don't know why it's doing that right now shouldn't have to go into the menu to change this every time I'll have to look into that, but we're going to ignore that until we get to 8,000. Alright, we're going to go speed break 2. Uh, we got quite a long runway. Um, I do want to be able to get off at coming in nine left if I can yeah we don't really have a high speed one that we can get off at but if I can exit at uh, Lima or November those are gonna be the first two uh, I don't want to get all the way to Foxtrot Foxtrot that'll be the last one and then we got a long taxi because we're gonna be landing right next to the terminal so the sooner we can get slowed down and off and towards the terminal the quicker we can get in All right, we're at 14,000. We've made that turn I was talking about. Headed back towards the direction of the airport. Actually, we're gonna be aiming right at the airport right now, and then we're gonna make another turn so we can line up for the runway. Airport's basically directly in front of us. We're gonna come in a little bit right over there. We're 14,000. Come on, clear me. Clear me down. I gotta get down to at least 9,000 here. I put that in. So that's gonna be our next clearance. Come on. Yeah, they're kind of messing with me right now. Yeah, you see this little pink diamond or pink triangle. Uh, that's kind of showing us where our vertical should be. We should be lower right now. Um, ATC is slow to clear us for some reason. And surprisingly, we're hanging at 200 even though our speed is allowing us to go up so we can descend. So it's really weird. 
acts a little strange. You're just joining, we are on our final approach, or we're on the STAR, Standard Terminal Approach Route, into Sao Paulo International. Got quite a longer name than that, but Sao Paulo, uh, Brazil. Turn the landing lights on. Please complete all Wi-Fi related tasks and stow any larger electronics. Descend and maintain 8,000 feet. We're nearly in. Uh, next flight, we're going to be flying from Orlando to Miami. We're going to do a U.S. flight. And then tomorrow we'll be flying from Sao Paulo over to Chile. And then Chile, or no, Sao Paulo down to Montevideo, uh, Uruguay. And then from Uruguay over to Chile. We'll do two world tour flights tomorrow, I think. And then maybe one U.S. flight. I was thinking we might be able to do two, two U.S. flights today. We'll see what the time looks like. All depends on what the time looks like. We're going to at least get one World Tour flight in a day, and then we'll see what we can do. If we can get another one in, or a U.S. flight. All 
Alright, 5,100. Hey, Europe! Welcome in, you're just in time for the final approach, or our approach into Sao Paulo. And Sao Paulo kind of fills our entire covering the horizon there. And then I don't think it reaches all the way to the, uh, oh, yeah, we're not even, we're looking, we're looking kind of south at it. Yeah, it doesn't actually reach all the way to the uh, ocean. I thought it did. Alright, we're descending to... I'm gonna get on speed here. Boliviana 736, proceed direct moment. Proceed direct moment, Boliviana 736. We're proceeding direct to Loman, I've put out flaps 1. Uh, Europe has been in the air for two hours from Manche Manchester to Gran Canaria. Cool, I've been to Gran Canaria in this world tour flight, and I haven't been to Manchester yet. In some... I want, we got a report established on localizer. We got a couple turns before that. And we're a little bit... I think we're doing okay. Actually, we're doing okay. See, Loman, we need to be just above 6,000 feet, so I'm going to hope we're going to be there. We are. We're making the turn. Just over my chart. Alright, so we're going to Vutbu. Vutbu, we're going to be at 5,100 feet. We're cleared there. Uh, and then we're going to go down, step down to 4,250, which is Isnap, and that's where we're going to be capturing the glide slope. Oh, we're just finishing this flight, Mika, and I'll probably be doing. I'm going to be doing another flight. We're going to fly, uh, like I said, Orlando to Miami, in the U.S. And there, you might be hearing the train now. There's the runway. Uh, I have no idea. I don't. I don't have either of those planes. Alright, I didn't get the minimums put in here. <laughs> uh, but it is... Let's see, 20... 2600 feet. Seems like a very hard to get that in there.
Hey, Sasha. All right, we got full flaps out. Flying into the 10 knot headwind. Airport's loading in. Go on the center line. as a ram air turbine uh, I don't think that was the best landing it felt a little weird a little awkward a little bit steep ladies and gentlemen welcome to Brazil the local time is 11:34 a.m. and it's currently about 25 degrees Celsius you do not need to mobile devices Please remain seated until the air traffic comes to a complete stop and the seat full sign is turned off. Remember to use caution when opening the overhead bins as items may have shifted during the flight. We thank you for flying with us. Hold short of runway 09 left, 27 right. Yeah, I had the landing, I think I had landing rate plug in at one point. Hi, uh, November Bravo, so that's it right here. Keep you going. I don't need cross the runway. Times are going to say I'm vacating. Yeah, here's Lima. On to Alpha. And then we're looking for Juliet. Let's be the next one. This is Kilo. Going into apron five or apron six. We're looking for apron uh, four.
These planes are parked the wrong way, looks like. Who's Juliet coming up? We're going Juliet then to Yankee. And then the Yankee four and Yankee four whiskey. It's gonna be here in apron four. We're gonna be gauge. What gate did we have? Four oh three. I guess that's that one right there. There's Yankee 4 Whiskey. And Gate 403. Good job on the freeware uh, upgrades to this airport. Of course, there's no marshaller. I don't know if GSX ground or broke or what happened. Yep. A little bit further. There we go. Alright, parking brake. Trying to set the parking brake. There we go. Parking brake set. Alright, let's uh, jump through here. We need to... Got the flaps, get the gear, did all that. Alright, transponder, we should have had this at standby. Uh, flight directors can come off. Flaps at zero, auto brakes off. Taxi lights are going to be off. The uh, APU gen sw switches on. Bleed on, and we'll select the APU generator here, and we'll cut off the engines. Let's see if GSX is going to work here. Yes, it will. So we'll request the deboarding. I'm going to bring the jetway out on my own because I always seem to have problems with that. We got that going. Uh, we have ground power. I have to request it. I think I can request it in here. Uh, additional services. Request GPU. Turn off the seatbelt signs. Hydraulics, fuel pumps, 
Window heat. All that can come off. Yaw damper. Should start seeing passengers coming off. There they go. it through here. Sections, we need GPU. Oh, I need some chocks too. I'll start the passengers deboarding in here. Not that it matters. Ground power on. And we'll switch to ground power. Turn off the APU. Turn off the bleed. Passage is continuing to get off. We can turn off our collision light. Keep the logo light on. Off, off. Our rest selectors can come off. All right. Well, we got the passengers coming off right there. While they are doing that, I'm going to pull up the Volanta and we will review the flight. All right, so there's our flight. Avoided this little mess there. And we landed in Sao Paulo. Ooh, a little for... <laughs> A little bit harder than I would like there. Not a good landing. Negative 4, 35. I uh, did not do a smooth landing right there. But distance just over a thousand nautical miles. Right, we'll put that away and give you guys a look back at the passengers continuing to deboard, or actually they are all deboarded now. All right, crew's gonna start deboarding. I haven't seen them. Over here, you can see the. Look at both sides. Take off the bags. We're having the graphics. Okay, there they are. I just couldn't see the bags. Okay, he's actually putting them in there. Really cool. I haven't seen the crew come off. I don't know, did they want me to say if I want the crew off? Alright, back inside. We're going to pull up the world map for the world tour. Here it is. I'll zoom out a little bit and we'll look at the whole thing. There it is. And today we are revealing Brazil. There it is. All right, so next flight on the world tour, we're going to be flying down to Uruguay, which is right down here. And then, and that'll be tomorrow morning at uh, 6, 6, a. M., 6 or 6.30 a.m., so set your clocks accordingly. That's my time, um, central time, U.S. Uh, Uruguay, then we're going to be flying over Ch to Chile. Uh, I think we'll do both those flights tomorrow. So we're making our way over in the new world. And we are basically at the point where I can... I wonder if the crew's gotten off yet. Yeah, but um, I got these, I got this uh, Latin VFR, uh, the 
Latin VFR jetways, so the jetways are always good. Uh, unfortunately, what that does is then it doesn't let the GSX ones replace the default. But I was having a problem with GSX not actually replacing them. They, we sometimes be missing part of the jetway, so. Looks really cool. We got the custom uh, pushback tool. These guys are doing good work here with. Oh, he's all done. He's going to drive away. Not sure why they always put this set of stairs here. Yeah, there we go, Sao Paulo. I think I do have a, I think there's a freeware mod for this airport. Make it, add the markings and make it look really good. All right, so I'm gonna go to intermission here on Twitch. For you guys over on YouTube, let me actually send you the next stream right here. Get you the next stream. There you go, that's the next stream. That's going to be our Orlando to Miami flight. And I'll be starting up in a few minutes. I just have to get, the, get loaded on in. So I will see you guys over there on YouTube. And on Twitch, I'll see you in just a few minutes, or we'll still be here, and I'll maybe run an ad during the uh, intermission. Thanks for coming in, and until the next flight, uh, take care. It'll only be a few minutes, but yeah, take care of yourselves.